Hello and welcome to another Let's Update Modding Open MW. And uh, here we are this morning. Hopefully you can hear me. Sound check time. Music check time. Uh, as usual. Hey, Gonzo, good morning. It's awesome to see you, dude. Thank you for the sound check. Appreciate it, man. <clears throat> On that note, we'll check that out. Uh, yeah, so I guess jumping right in. Happy modding day to everybody. And, uh... <clears throat> so it was off, off last weekend because of the holiday and stuff. Um, but a lot of things have kind of happened and are happening. And we're getting close, as you can see here, to bury the lead. Uh, we're getting really close to, you know, dropping 6.0 of everything. So um, further to that, I went ahead and released uh, what I call no pop-up charge-in, which is basically does what it says on the tin, removes all tutorial pop-ups, all. There's one that I don't remove because you shouldn't. Um, and yeah, so this was just a very simple addition, uh, that I had to my personal list and I threw it on the website just because. So yeah, that was a fun one to do too. Just kind of tweaking around, going into the heads of people from 2002. When you look at those scripts, <clears throat> um, harvest lights, uh, which one goes untouched? Good question, Gonzo. So the one that prevents you from leaving and getting to say to Neen before you talk to Salas Gravius and actually get your stuff for, uh. Um, or not Salus Gravius, so what's his name? The, the Imperial guy. He gives you the package for Caius Crusades. Yeah, yeah, that one. Because obviously if you leave without that, you have problems. So that's the only one I don't remove. Uh, you're able to miss Fargoth's ring, you know, spoiler alert. But yeah, you cannot miss the actually thing you need for the main quest. So, that was, again, that was a fun one to do. Um, Harvest Lights was created and released. Something I did over the holiday and my time off. Um, basically... Again, does what it says on the tin. It's a uh, Lua mod for OpenMW 0.49 and newer. And it basically looks at lights around harvestables. And when you harvest them with uh, uh, graphic herbalism, zaps the lights. And then when they grow back, the lights come back too. Um, so yeah, long story short. Um, as I wrote here, uh, no more lingering lights, like I just said. And it's content, content agnostic procedural algorithm. Should work with everything and it tries really hard to. There is, of course, some vanilla Morrowind content that's a little problematic. You can check the change log. I note a couple of those specifically. But yeah, that was a fun one to do. Um, Shield Unequipper, which we wrote on this very stream a while ago, not too long ago, um, had a pretty major update. I call it 2.0 now. Um, what I referred to at the time of creating the mod as MCP mode is actually the default behavior. It turns out it worked that way for a reason. Uh, I just bumped into several issues and edge cases that probably, uh, you know, informed the way they implemented that but in a nutshell um when we go ahead let's go ahead and load the game huh when we whoops when we have a shield equipped and we equip something um you know that doesn't make sense to be holding a shield with like a two-handed crossbow or something like that um the shield gets unequipped but what also happens now is so here we have the bow equipped my shield got dropped. Let's, uh, right, this one right here. So let's go here. We'll equip my shield. Ah, shield. We'll go with this one. Okay, got my shield equipped. Looking good. Pretty good. And then, so now if I equip the Dwarven Crossbow, boom, no shield. Gets dropped. Uh, hey, hey, Santa. Hey, Sophia. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining, uh, it is a great modding morning indeed. So yeah, previously what would happen is if you had on the 1.0 version of this mod, if you had the shield equipped and you equipped like a, a crossbow, it would just spit out the crossbow um, and boom, you got the shield. Despite the mod being called shield unequipper, it kept the shield equipped. So anyways, as I said, it's implemented just like um, the MCP feature now. And yeah, there's reasons why they did that. So as it turns out, so yeah, um, I think this one is basically done until they... Uh, you know, have some kind of a, I don't know, maybe at some point there'll be like a engine handler or a game event for equipping. Um, and I won't have to do like the on-frame checking that I do now. Hey, yeah, it just works. Honestly, now it just works. So yeah, that was a, that was another fun one to bang out some morning just on coffee. I think it was Thanksgiving. I was just like, there was a, cause I'm playing it on my steam deck on my just good Morrowind run. And I definitely had issues. Um, it's time to fix these. I thought to myself. So yeah, 
boom, there's that. Uh, MOMW patches, 1.0 release coming soon. And I just wanted to quickly look at, like, the huge amount of content we have here because just mad props to everybody um, for putting these together. But, yeah, I mean, what started as, like, a simple patch collection is now over 20 deep and counting, you know, including several dynamic music soundtrack modifications, lots of patches for mods you know and love and things like that. And it's just... Boom. Um, it's becoming really awesome. So ju we just have a few things to tie up. Uh, documentation, things like that. And I think there's, correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but a few more patches we want to throw in there. Something with logs on fire, for example. So, yeah, just a props to everybody who has contributed. And, uh, yeah, we're doing this thing here. So I wanted to really quickly go over, too, uh, that a major update's coming out for Natural Character Growth and Decay Morrowind Lua Edition. Uh, we're going to have a new health Calculation by Mede Youssef. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, by the way. Um, new level calculation as well by Mede Youssef. Um, that's going to be huge because definitely there are some complaints about the, the health calculations in particular with a higher level character. Indeed, I felt it myself on a few playthroughs. Um, and yeah, our friend, you know, uh, he just has better maths going on and it's going to be more fun. So we're going to add that. I am going to be adding a new stats UI integrated with the vanilla menu where you can see like the decay stats right alongside the vanilla stuff, uh, level progress alongside, uh, or instead of vanilla. Hey, what's up sector? Good morning, dude. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. <clears throat> and yeah, so that'll be a fun one. Cause we can now like, uh, replace vanilla menus. So yeah, I'll just have like a, basically the same as the vanilla menu, but with NCGD stuff. And you know, when people release, um, their own UI mods, I can hook into them and, and work with them too because you know vanilla ui is okay but uh yeah yeah caffeine and cyberpunk cool okay right on that's uh you know i don't have that cyberpunk yet but we'll get there someday when i'm done playing morrowind Oink. uh and yeah there's another issue i have with counting decay time right now decay just looks at your total game hours time regardless of if you've ever uh you know disabled decay and i feel like we should actually like look at when the player disables decay and not count that and that's a, some simple relatively simple maths so um i will be doing a kind of a new packaging system for the mod too to make it easier to install individual things and i'll be including some alvazir's patches uh that they made so mad props to alvazir as usual for doing what they do and i don't know maybe more but yeah so some love coming to this one very soon and uh the next thing i wanted to look at actually we're gonna take a peek at it here is uh we talked about it previously, and this is another one that we worked on on the stream. But uh, I have implemented procedural travel points in Signpost Fast Travel. And what I mean by that is when you visit a named cell, up to 100 random travel targets are generated. And so when you travel to a place, uh, I'll just let's just check it out. When you travel to a place, um, you go to one of those points. And you can see in my terminal there, there's a bunch of points printed out. That's just me doing some some debugging here but yeah in a nutshell that's what happened um i implement uh happens i implemented some console commands for testing it out and we're going to do that right now um after a quick demonstration so yeah here we go uh unlike the previous version of the mod i can't sit here and use a console command necessarily to give myself access to all the points you have to have visited vivek to have points there you know what i'm saying um i figure it might be pretty expensive to like load <laughs> every named cell like at the beginning of the game and try to generate them or something hacky like that i don't know sector tell me i'm crazy um so anyway we're just gonna go ahead and no not at all gonzo so what i have done actually thank you for mentioning that i have included a uh two patched versions of uh, peter bits signpost retextured where i restore um the name for the activators which makes them usable yeah yeah and uh, eventually down the road when i'm able to remove the tooltip via lua i will do that as well because that's really why peter bit removed the name was to get rid of the tooltip make it immersive because you can actually read them right <laughs> i am definitely crazy it will probably be fine so sector i'm glad you mentioned that look it is <laughs> mostly fine but like anything procedural there's moments where like the hilarious happens you know and that's part of what i feel like what makes it great so, so anyway, let's, uh, without further ado, we'll experience it as it's meant to be used. And then we'll, like, really get funky here and uh, do some fun stuff. So, um, haven't been to Ebonheart yet. Or there. Where are we going? Boom. All right. So, here I am. Yeah, relatively good spot right here. Not bad. Okay. So, 
obviously while I was developing this, I didn't like run to the signpost um, every time, you know, cause that's like, it just takes time. So what I did was, as I mentioned, I implemented a, uh, this was me playing around with trying to make footstep sounds. Didn't quite get that going, but we'll maybe get there eventually. Here we go. So here's my console command to list all of my travel points. And as you can see, we've got, you know, quite a lot for say Deneen, and like just a huge amount for Pelagiate actually here, wow. Um, so what it will do is any town that uh, is named that takes up more than one cell, it will add points for all of those cells. So in Sedanine, you got what, two cells named Sedanine? You'll get points in both of those. And Vivek is a special case that I will describe as we get there. Um, I consider all of the Vivek, comma, blah, cells Vivek, and the actual cells named Vivek, I just ignore because they're not useful for the purpose of you know, teleporting somewhere. So, okay, anyway, back to my Lua command testing stuff. Here we go. We'll go to travel two. And we'll go say to mean capitalization matters. And we just hit enter. Boom. And now we are given uh, <laughs> one of the more. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, this is technically a valid path grid point. I have filtered out points that are in the water. So, Anything Z1 or higher basically is acceptable. Let's just do it again. All right, here we go. Another one that's like pretty okay, right? Since we're here, let's go ahead and just, uh, whoops. Just go ahead and... Boom, look at that light. That's what I like to see. Okay. <laughs> we're just testing mods while we're testing mods. You like that? Here we go. So yeah, um, as you can see, like it mostly more or less just works, but every now and then you get like a hilarious point. Like, yes, I came to Sedanin and I am now standing in the ditch next to the bridge. <laughs> I feel like that's funny, you know, but acceptable. Um, <laughs> you know, so boom. Like, here we go. This is actually a pretty good one, right? Like, hey, I'm on the road into town on the back road. Um, this one. A bit of a bizarre one. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. I had, I thought so, too. And, like, when I started doing this, I'm like, oh, man, this is actually awesome. Well, so that's a good question, Smalio. Um, you know, RN Jesus, as I like to refer to the random gods, is a weird thing. And sometimes, like, I've gotten the same point twice in a row out of more than 100. You know, it just happens. You're at the mercy of randomization. I could maybe do some more in my Lua code to create more randomization. But, uh... Um, oh, interesting sector, Kingdom Come, on my two playlists, never played that. Um, if you have a bounty, it kind of makes some sense. Interesting. Um, so, like, what do you mean by that, Gonzo? Because something that I've yet to implement that um, I've been talking with a sector about on the side is I want to disable traveling from a signpost if you have combat active, right? Like, you don't want to use it to cheese out of combat. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, see, um, I'm not the first to have this idea, and I feel like it does really work, right? Like... And we're getting a lot of points within the same area too, small, you know. So yeah, there is that. Coming into town through the ditch, if you're trying to avoid the guards. Oh, yeah, yeah, right on. Okay, I feel you. Um So so thinking about that, you're thinking, okay, like maybe you're thinking like, ah yeah, we'll pick a point like that if you have a wanted level. But it's like hard to know, right? Like what's in a ditch and what cell. And this algorithm, which I'll bring up right now, is basically content agnostic. And I wanna keep it that way as much as I can. But just to run through it here, every frame, we take a look at a cell, and if it has a name, and if the name is not Vivek, and if it's not a, you know, interior or a fake exterior. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Gonzo, I feel you. I'm just saying theoretically, like, um, why I didn't implement that, um, for sure, though. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you set aside these conditions, then we start thinking about things here. We set a max try because um, some cells that are named just don't have points, like uh, the Dex Temple, for example. There just aren't, like, any points that generate there. I don't know. And it's probably for the, for the best. Um, you know what I mean if you've been there. Um, and so this is where we do some special handling where we consider the Vivek blah, cells as Vivek. And then basically it's just data shuffling, right? This is boring just deciding what to load and when. What's really interesting, though, is here. This is where we talk to the nav mesh, uh, gener uh, the navigator, rather. And we tell the navigator, all right, we need to find, so before we start picking points, we need to find a good point from which to pick points from. So that's what we do here. We give it the player position. We say, I want a place where I can walk. Find the nearest nav mesh position, and that's what this is. 
And then down here, in a, set, in a bit of code that I don't know if is 100% finished yet, but it works. And what I mean by that is I don't know if 100 should be hard-coded here or what. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, what's up, Alice uh, Tekka1700? Welcome. Thank you for joining. Glad you're here. And yeah, that's what we do here. So, <laughs> um, so I don't know. Again, I don't know if 100 is going to be you know, um, hard coded or making, I'm going back and forth between making it an option. I don't want to like have people foot gun themselves and hundred is fine. Right. I've only got 60 points in Satanine. My life sucks. Um, so anyway, for one to a hundred, giving me a hundred attempts, I find a random point around the circle, which is my random position that I picked half a cell radius. Same option, give me a place that I can walk, and boom, that's where we end up with, um, you know, this stuff. If we scroll up in my console here, we can see, yeah, this is me generating points, 70 points for Satanine. Boom, right there. Uh, yeah. Well, I was, uh, you could thank Erm for that, actually. Like, I kind of had the idea, but I was like, nah, it's probably not worth it. But then Erm was like, no, no, you can totally do it. <clears throat> you know, the, that's what the Navigator API is for, Um yeah, thanks, Gonzo. It's nothing. I mean, again, there's nothing. I didn't really do any work. Props to Elsid and the authors of, you know, Recast Navigation, really. I'm just using their tools. They got gave me a cool toolbox to use. I'm just using it. But that's the meat of it right there, right? Find a good random point to start from, and then give me just 100 points. And if it's above water, that's right. I do that right there. I do feel like the navigator, you know, should have an option and maybe when the water is like more exposed, but the navigator should have an option to say walk and also not in water, right? Like I can do plus some other option here. I should maybe say like minus something, you know? Um, Cause I want to truly avoid water. Like I don't even want to be in the shallows, right? Cause I was getting a lot of, of those such points before I did this. Actually, I can comment this out and I can show you. Guaranteed in Satanine, we'll get some <laughs> points in the water. All right, uh, so let's exit. Reload Lua. Let's go. CNC. And so one of the other interface commands I implemented. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Sector, same here. Like, I looked at nearby and I was like, huh, I bet you can do some cool stuff with that. But then just never did anything. Turns out, yes, totally can. So here we go. We're going to um, we'll use another interface command that I added, which is the handy dandy forget command. I have forgotten. And now all I had to do was pull up the terminal. And you know that I've got points in the water because the count here is 100. And so let's just shuffle through some points and you'll see what I mean. I'll end up in the water a lot more than I feel like even Todd would approve of. Okay, so here we are. Not Actually, the decent point. Okay, good. So far, so good. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. I'm just swimming. Here we go. Second point. I'm in the river. I mean, there you go. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, technically I can walk here, right? Like, this is walkable space, but I wouldn't, like... I figure, I feel like this is too goofy, even for a procedural mod, right? So, yeah. Um, hence why I have... Whoops. Hence why I have this check in the code and is uh, not, you know... I feel like we need that. It's not even really just me being picky about immersion, right? So, yeah. Boring, boring code. Um, and what's mostly interesting is the interface, which... Um, like the Harvest Lights mod, actually I should bring this up here, the Harvest Lights mod and Signpost Fast Travel both come with a global interface for adding support for new uh, objects that I didn't code um, into the mod itself. Ooh, yeah, thank you for asking, Alex. What the heck is, Alex, what is, what the heck is this mod? So this mod is uh, something I wrote. Let me pull up the website for it. Mm, it's called Signpost Fast Travel whereby you click on a signpost, time will pass, it'll take some money from you and you travel. It was inspired by the Witcher 3 fast travel um, mechanic, which I thought was really cool. And what I have done actually is I have, so what you're seeing here is the first version of the mod where I like hand placed points here, you know, made sure everything was good. This new stuff here from the Matrix is the latest version, which I'm still, uh, yes, Witcher 3, you know it, <laughs> which I'm still working on. Um, implements random points in town. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. There it was already a mod like that. I actually mentioned it right here, Andromeda's Fast Travel, which kind of is what inspired me to do this. Um, I think it worked fine. The, the problems with this mod, uh, number one, I could start out the game and just click Balmora and go there. You know, it didn't require you to visit there, and I feel like that's a little cheaty. Um... 
And also it had hard-coded travel points, which uh, as I was saying, what I have Im implemented now and I was just showing here is all of these travel points are just randomly generated. So like the mod doesn't have to know, oh, you go here in this cell and you go there in that cell. Now when you walk in there, it uses the OpenMW engine to randomly find good places to go. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Let's try it again because we just can't have enough. I'm actually gonna fly to Vivek City now. Mount Can, oh, okay, so Mount Can was a weird one because, um, <laughs> actually, I, let's, we should test that one now. Um, yeah, thank you. It was, I, you know, um, as I said, I like The Witcher, uh, Witcher 3, and uh, I thought, you know, we need some kind of fast travel in Morrowind. I've got Multimark by our friend Zach has a cat. Obviously, I'm using fast travel. We need something, you know, maybe a little more uh, fun or different to add to that. And um, actually, I have an idea for this mod that I want to run by the group here in a moment, though. Because what I'm about to demonstrate is I'm collecting a lot of data that actually gets completely unused. It's true. Ooh, yeah, do it, Sector. I love that. <laughs> do it. That's all I can say is just do it. Why not? So basically how my code worked, if you remember, is any any cell that has a name we're generating points for. But obviously if you played Morrowind, you know that the majority of named cells don't actually have like a signpost related to it. Um, you know, I wanna make sure I'm not inside the building when I generate these points. Cause what happens is, by the way, if I'm inside a, hey dude guy, welcome. Thank you for jo joining. <laughs> Glad you're here. We're just uh, doing some random travel points here. Woo. All right. So let's see now if, let's see what I get in Vivac City. All right. So check it. I have flown around quite a bit. And um, actually, let's just go ahead and take a look at how many points we're working with here. Because it's probably in the hundreds at this point. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. Okay. So. I believe somebody recently was working on printing output. By the way, thank you, Sector. All right, so wow, I, I totally lost some output there. Let's try that again. Boom, there we go. It's because my T-Mux. Okay, yeah, wow, look at all these Vivek points. Hey, I mean, it could actually happen, dude guy. I mean, Sector was not joking. <laughs> So yeah, you can see I got a kind of a crap ton of points here for Vivek. Let's start shuffling through them. Yes, Sector is the guy to talk to for sure. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Travel to Vivek. Let's see what happens. Boom, here we go. Nice random point. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm in Redoran. Let's go. Where am I at now? I'm on the beach. Okay, I mean, you know, this is... It's right there by the bridge. This is what I'm talking about. Sometimes the procedural nature of, of picking these points is a little goofy. This one's awesome. Boom, back in Redoran. Back at the beach. Different beach. Oh, my. <laughs> All right. So, like, I'm kind of personally, I feel like, with the caveat, right, that procedural content... Is Sector the Wizard? Yes, absolutely. Good, you're aware. <laughs> Procedural content is just goofy, I think. On a Canton roof. So, actually, Alice, check it. If we do this, it is possible to join, to generate, legitimately generate such a point. And I'm going to try to do it right now. And I'm going to show you how. We're going to go to uh, right here, okay. Now let's do, let's forget all the points for Vivek and regenerate them. Because what happens is the points are generated relative to your player position. So if you're flying into town, literally, you could end up very well with something like this. Okay, forgotten, regenerated, as you can see, my output right there. Now let's try this. Uh, boom, right here on, yes, on the roof. So there you have it. If Again, it, this will only happen, though, if you fly into town on the roof, right? If I go back down to normal people, you know, whoops, non-wizard uh, elevations, 
my Telvani peeps know what I'm talking about. There we go. All right. We're now just a normal person that walks on their feet. And we'll forget all my points. We'll generate them again. Boom. There you can see. And then if we just play the random shuffle, we'll note we have kind of more, you know, elevated points. And, and likewise, if I go up to, like, the second level, I'll get more points that are on the, these bridges and stuff, right? I was testing it last night where if I, like, uh, you know, let's say I have Mark and Recall, and I recalled from the arena, and then I came out on one of these bridges, and it'll give you points up there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Um, and so you have the – again, you have the ability, if you don't like the points you got, yeah, you can always just kind of boom, you know, let's give me some new ones. And uh, so – Without further ado, though, as I was saying, one of the things I do that's a little extra is <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, to answer your question, yes, if you generated the points in such a way that they ended up on the roof, right? So, if you flew into Vivek and like were flying up high on a, at the level of the Cantons, you could get that. Mm, that's a that's an interesting question, Gonzo. To like dynamically calculate that, you would have to at some point. I feel like have to load the cell though to know what's there, right? Maybe, um, but c because I don't, the world database just doesn't have it at all times. Um, I know what you're going at though. Yeah, you we want to have like a more logical calculation of what our points are. So, as you can see here, I'm in the Urshalaku camp. There is no sign that points you here if you played the game. Spoiler alert, if not. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And so that's why I added the option to forget the points, right? Like, let's say you did fly into... Uh, yeah, Gonzo, I love it. Thank you. Let's say you do fly into Vivek. You generate a bunch of points on the roof. And you're like, oh, shoot, I don't actually want that. You know, um, you can then open up the Lua console and I mean, maybe this is cheating. Maybe at some point I'll add like item to forget your points or something, you know, but um, yeah, you can simply say, okay, well, I don't want the rooftop spawn points. I've forgotten them and boom, you've forgotten all travel points for Vivek. Um, but as I was saying, we are generating points for every named cell. camp. So we can do stuff like this. Places where you would reasonably never have a signpost to travel to, you now can. Um, oh, hi. It wouldn't be Morrowind, right, if I didn't get attacked by a random critter. <laughs> so, what I'm getting at here is, and the question I have for you, the viewers, right now. I feel like all of this data I'm collecting for random named cells is going to waste right like all these cells that are named that we're generating points to um we should have some way to use them right and i'm thinking of adding like i don't know okay so check this out i'm gonna do this this named cell ash in a bit soupy is that what it's called i want to have some way that we can use these travel points right like a fast travel mechanic and what i mean is like i don't know should i add like some kind of a special item that the player has to get through a quest or fighting a boss, something difficult, something not just given to them easily, but this item, like a ring. If you're wearing the ring and you click a signpost, maybe that'll bring up a menu where you can look at all of the points that you've collected and say like, I wanna go here. And maybe it'll cost magic too, um, in addition to gold and time. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I, I do want to do something like this, but I want to I want to be thoughtful, you know, because um, we are collecting this data no matter what. I got these travel points. They're here. <laughs> you know, we're just we're collecting them. So I don't know. We should use them. Let's go to another one over here. Magic instead of golden time, because I was thinking in addition to right, um, maybe a little slice of magic, uh, you know, um, Right, exactly, Alice. I was thinking about that, too. Shuffling the ring in and out would be annoying. I could I could easily make it so they just have to have it on their inventory. I wonder if the inconvenience balances the OP of it um, or not, but yeah, you know, 
I go back and forth on the topic of um, fast travel because it's like, look, we're playing this game. Let's be real. We're all using fast travel, right? We got Zax, Lua, Multimark, um, or you should have it. <laughs> or you have some other system set up. Maybe you just have the Toddly system of doing COC, you know, and you're saying, boom, I want to go to Balmora. I'm Todd. Look at me. What kind of interface are you imagining to choose a point? Thank you. That is a great question. So I was thinking something similar to if you've used Zach's Lua Multimark, something like that. Yeah, exactly, Sector. So so you get to the... Okay, so you get to... How would it work? You get to the signpost. Slow down there, buddy. You get to the signpost. Oh my gosh, a little faster. Here we go. You get to the signpost. You click it. And instead of doing the travel thing, it will pause the game and pull up a menu. And the menu will list out all the points and the region they're in or whatever. Um, and then you could just click it to get, and then I get a random point from it. Ooh, ooh, that's a great idea. A magic token and fast travel costs a token. Oh, wow. I kind of love that idea, actually. Um, out of Horatio's Magical Moro and Atlas. Oh, interesting. Hmm. So, okay, okay. So what we're getting at here is we have a quest that will lead the player to the travel token salesman. Oh, I really love that idea. Alice, I'm going with that. I, I love that idea. We're doing that. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, so okay, taking a step back, what we're going to have is the player will somehow find out about, uh, yeah, the tokens are like, boom, super good idea. Um, the player will somehow find out about the, the, the travel thing. It costs Dwemer coins. Oh, man. Ooh, also a solid idea. Hold on, hold on. I gotta write this down. Hold up, hold up. Okay, so so still to do. Yeah, no travel in combat. Points lost. Yeah. Okay. So uh, fast travel in this manner costs. Yeah, yeah, for sure, right? They're everywhere. And, like, when you're playing with Tamriel we built, they got Dwemer ruins all over the place, you know? So I feel like it would make you be thoughtful about fast travel, but also, like, hey, I could use it, you know? Um, you wouldn't be, like, spamming it everywhere, right? You still got to use for your Zax multi-mark, for example. Ooh, I love this idea. Um, let's see here. Magic uh, cost in addition, maybe? Um... A quest that leads the player to the token sales person. Awesome. Ooh, that's great. Um, more tokens the longer the distance. Right, exactly. And yeah, we have, so um, in my code right now, I'm calculating a, let's see here, global. We can just take a quick look here. In my code, I have a, where is it? A distance value, which basically ends up being the number of cells you're traveling so we could say like yeah based on however many cells um and, and just do whatever so cool that's pretty cool this is exciting so this has gone from a mere idea that i wanted to do to a reasonable implementation that i think would be kind of cool you know and not just be like yo uh this is oblivion and here's a gui and click it and you go you know which you don't even in oblivion for like the major cities you don't even have to have been to those places i don't know if you're spoiler alert if you haven't played I feel like that's just too much, right? Witcher 3 is nice because you have to have been to the signpost. You have to be at the signpost. Um, yeah. So I still think... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, so I can draw I can draw a vector, Gonzo, but I can't, like, actually see, like, with a raycast, things in an unloaded cell. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's a good point, Alice something we got to think about i'm not like 100 percent on any of these points by the way but like i feel like these ideas bring it closer to a reality right um 
Yeah, that's good feedback. Okay, um, you need the ID. Well, check it, what you can do, my friend. Thank you for asking. Thank you for sidetracking, my friend. They'll just look at the source code on GitLab right now. Hmm? Meanwhile, my poor laptop is like dying over here like, yo. <sighs> All right, let's uh, shoot. What was I even doing? Let's look at here. Wow, who's that guy? Come on, GitLab. You can find it. Right here. In this little fun file. That's <laughs> super handsome. There we go. Um. Hey. Does it say that? Yeah, this one right here. Boom. I'm blind. That's it. Hmm, okay, well, yeah, I will definitely COC into there for you then. Let's do it, huh? Let's get sidetracked. That's what I do best, really. All right. Um, I'm just going to tunnel over home. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I did a thing where I deleted my entire config. Because, as I said, we were going to set up total haul overhaul from zero. Whew. Don't worry, I can fix it. Magical undo. There we go. Thank you, Emacs, for being awesome. Okay. The potatoification of my laptop begins. Here we go. We'll take this little diversion just for you, Sector. I've borked my OS many times. For sure. Not in that manner, though. That's, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, so this is my Intel integrated graphics card loading up total overhaul. Just so you know, that's what's going on here. That's why it's like... <sighs> you can do it, little buddy. Here we go. All right. Wow. We did it. Come on. Come on. There we go. Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, this guy over here is going to talk to us, though. I know, it's so great. Yeah, that Natch armor is fire. Okay, Sector, is this what you needed? Hmm? Static is not allowed, it says. Huh, all right. Yeah. There we go. All right. Thank you for that diversion. Alice, uh, do you mean with regard to my uh, signpost mod? Any c incompatibilities? Is that what you mean? Because we're going to jump back in here and take another look. All right. Yeah, great. Thank you for asking. Because actually, as it turns out, I have written about this. And as I note here, in the README, the mod should be compatible with any replacer of signposts that preserves the name on the activator. And uh, that's right, Santa. We're a bunch of Rita's. Uh, the fabulous Signpost Retextures mod, Signposts Retextured mod by Peterbit, actually um, will remove the name because what it does is it actually makes the names readable on the signpost, which is great. So for immersion purposes, right, it removes the tooltip. The problem with that is 
As I note right here, the engine will silently turn activators with no name into a static. Meaning you can no longer use an activator handler to check when the player clicks on it. Which means mods like this are basically broken because of some Toddism. Um, so what I have done is I have included uh, patched versions of both of the plugins for Morrowind and Tamriel Rebuilt that this one comes with that restore the name and uh, thus making it work. But yeah, as I note here, any replacer that preserves the name will be compatible. Um, any mods I know to be incompatible, I will try to list here. Um, there was another signpost replacer I saw on Nexus that did, but it did have the names too. Um, so it should work, but yeah. So that's in a nutshell. Um, and as I said before, somebody could write a third party mod and not have to update the source code for this one. And they can add support for more signposts, right? Like if there's another, like, I don't know, some other landmass mod that has signposts or signposts in Starwind or whatever get added or something like that. You could use, <clears throat> excuse me, some code like this to implement a mod that will add support in this one. So, um. There's, there's ways to make things in, uh, compatible if they're not compatible, for sure. There's always a way. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go to another place that is... Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the more I did this, it was more of like the galaxy brain moment. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is great. And so beautifully simple, too. You know, the code is like... If you're not a programmer, you might not be able to appreciate it but the code that i'm using is like pretty you know stupid simple um in the best possible way i should probably not we want to have some good points here yeah there we go all right gimme 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 yeah So what I'm doing here is I'm just collecting a bunch of points, and then I'm going to do a really quick just shuffle around. But I also want to go, let's see, do I have it loaded up? Yeah, I want to go to TR and try some of these points out in TR. Because one of the main reasons why I did this was, uh, let me just show you, Tamro Rebuilt. It's a freaking amazing project, by the way. Adds quite a lot of signposts, it turns out. Like, this is the... So, these are the Morrowind signpost IDs, by the way. There's a lot. Not not that many. These are the TR signposts. It's just, like, never ends, right? Like, all these places. So, if I were to go to each of these places and, like, handpick a place to point, I don't know. It would take me to, like, 2090, and I would hate life. So, having this automated, automated way of generating the points was just essential for working with TR, right? There was no way I could do it any other way without hating everything. So, from your height level. Yeah, that's exactly, um, that's exactly what we try to do. Um, actually, Gonzo. Like, when I do, when I do the going back to the code here. When I do my various, you know, feels for points. I start with the player position. That's what self position means right here. Self in the context of any script is just whatever the script is attached to. This is a player script, so self is the player. We start from there, and that gives us some lot theoretically logical point. And then from there, right, we start doing the, you know, gimme, 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 gimme points. So Alright, um, let's see, what else? Uh, let's go to CSC Coco. Okay, we got points, good. Good. Okay, so what I want to do now, we're going to do a fast travel shuffle here. And just, we're going to go from Balmora to Pelagia to Sedanin to Ilaod to Narmok. And we're going to see where the funky points we get put at are. Um, because I'm not going to lie, you know, I have been playing with the version 1.0 of this mod on my Steam Deck. But it's actually super fun to use the signpost for fast travel. Um, but it's a little boring, you know? Um, it's a little boring. Yeah, exactly. It just, yeah. 
it ends up happening, right? Because when you walk into town, your foot level is the roof level of those houses that are lower, right? So yeah, like I said, this is just kind of like the inevitable goofiness of doing things procedurally, but I digress. Here we go. Let's, uh, all right, let's um get to a more reasonable speed here. 400 should be good. All right, here we go. <laughs> See, I'm like... This is considered Pelagiad, right? This is like the very corner of the cell, but here I am, like... Yeah, exactly, Alice. That's why I was thinking, like, hey, it's probably okay if these points are not perfect, right? Like, this is Pelagiad. There you go. Look. The next time I click it... What, is it going to tell me I'm there? Let's see. <laughs> right? So now I'm just, like, a little ways this way, you know? So, um... Yeah, it's just a little bit of the goofiness. We'll actually get to Sedanine from this one over here. Like, this is just how Todd intended it to be, okay? Here we go. As usual, we're just hiding from the guards down here in the ditch. Don't mind me, okay? Okay, Gonzo, yeah. And actually, I should mention that all of these interface commands that I'm using... Any other mod externally can use these, travel to, like, any mod has access to my signpost mods points. If you're writing some quest mod, right, and you want to, like, use a random point from a cell, you 100% can use this exact code, and it will just work in your code. All right, let's continue traveling. And by the way, if you're in Satanine and you click this awkwardly placed signpost telling you Satanine is right here when you're in it, the mod will tell you. You're in Satanine, by the way. Okay. Moving on. Three hours to get me over here. Okay. And this is a, yeah, this is a decent, you know, a decent point, I think. <laughs> All right. Uh, Aldrun, not been yet. Nor there. But I did. Yeah, here we go. Let's go here. Okay. And yeah, it's nighttime. But here we are in town. And actually... Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> let's go demonstrate one of my other mods that I just released right now. Boom, boom. <sighs> yes, that's satisfying. Okay, so let's go to TR. Hmm? Let's go to Old Ebonheart. Yeah? Let's make it daytime. And let's uh, lower my desk, huh? That's better. All right. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> Naturally spawn inside of a building. So that's a game. Something sensible. Here we go. Just go ahead and. Uh... Okay. So this is a, you know, if you've played Tamriel Rebuilt before, this is a pretty big city. Um, You can get a lot of points here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just walk to the other side of town. Collect some. And uh, again, you know, what points get generated really depend on, like, where you're at when you walk into town. So if you're flying into town, you're going to have some rooftop points. You'll end up traveling to... Old Ebonheart by way of the rooftops. If you end up coming in by boat at the docks, you know, it all depends. Or if you're walking from the front, um, can you get points in interior cells? Currently, the way the code is written, no. But, I mean, that would be a, a, a trivial, you know, all I'm doing up here is just saying, like, oh, uh, you know. These, these are basically, this line specifically is what stops it from working in an interior. But we could have, like, a sec separate one or whatever. What's your idea for interior cells, dude guy? I mean, obviously, it's randomly tra traveling, teleporting to any cell would be useful in some context, probably. But you got a specific idea. I'm curious. Let's get some random TR points, shall we? Come on. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, here I am spawn inside of a building whoops ah Alice that's uh 
That's a great question. I'll get to that in a moment. Oh, okay. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's totally something you could do. Uh, <laughs> and again, a third-party mod could utilize these points. So, yeah, this one I forgot. I have to regenerate the um, points here. Because spawning inside the um, inside the house. So the way the navigator, taking a step back, the way the navigator API is written, what happens is when I am in a particular place and I request points, it will give me points that are like where I'm at. That's why when I'm high up, I get rooftop points. That's why when I spawn inside of a building, I get points inside of a building and so on. Um, we had a discussion on the Lua, in the Lua channel on the OpenMW Discord the other day where Elsa demonstrated spawning pillows on rooftops. Um, and this is related to basically how some of the algorithms under the hood work. So we need to be mindful of that. And yeah, when I spawn in here in the building, it's going to, you know, it's going to break my points. So I got to forget them. some new ones now and then Todd willing we will have some usable points I'm gonna go ahead and just walk to the other side of town so one of the things I did when I was testing the mod I've got like ridiculous acrobatics and I was just jumping around and ended up with some rooftop spawn, uh, spawn points um okay so Alice going back to what you said about doors 100% we can do that if I look here at the nearby package, actually, doors are a specific thing that we can query for. You can look at nearby doors, doors. And an early version of this algorithm had me using door points as, like, something to key on to, uh, to generate spawn points. And that's still technically an option, right? Like, we could still technically refine this algorithm here, which is actually, as I've said a couple of times now, pretty stupid simple. There actually really is no algorithm. I'm just using the API like a dum dum. We could do something like that, though, right? Like, say, okay, give me a door, or for every door in the scene, like, do something and get the points from that. I started out that way because I was keying in on the signposts themselves. But I quickly landed on the problem where, like, signposts end up not being so close to doors sometimes, you know? And so my new code doesn't care about signposts specifically for the purpose of identifying a travel point, so this could work again. We could uh, maybe say, like, we could do like maybe a graded pattern of generation, right? Like, so, okay, if the scene has doors, try to use the doors. If the scene has, you know, a bunch of activators, try to go from the door to the activator or whatever, from a door to the NPC or something. We could get pretty fancy um, and elaborate. For now, I've tried to keep it simple, though, but something to keep in mind for sure. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Will it just work? Right, exactly. Absolutely. That's why they're probably the best thing to key in on, for sure. So you could say, like, okay, you could maybe reasonably assume that where the player is is an okay place to be, even if they're flying in. Then if you keyed in on the door and you said, like, give me a point between where the player is and a door, you might be less likely to generate janky points, like on rooftops. Um, that's definitely worth experimenting with. I'm going to put a note in the code to actually try that. getting some really good ideas here today thank you so much all right now the moment we've all been waiting for that i keep delaying whoops hmm that's an interesting question gonzo um yeah so we would have to, that's something actually I, I thought about, but I struggled with the complexity of implementing the code to like, be like, okay, we're only collecting t maybe 12 points. And then when we come back, it's like, oh, well, we only have 12 points. Let's try to get some more. Like, are we in Balmora this cell versus Balmora that cell now? And we should get some more points. I opted not to do that just, again, to keep it simple, but that's for sure another way that we could spice up the algorithm, reduce the radius, um, and more frequently, right? Because you might have noticed in my code, actually, 
Whoops. Not that. Yeah, here. There is a tries field where I keep track of how many times we are trying to collect points. And in the code, I've actually hard-coded up here, max tries two. Because every try, we're doing 100 attempts. So two means 200, three means 300, and so forth. It linear linearly goes up quite a bit. Hence why I limited it to two. If we don't have any spawn points by the second try, we're not going to get any, period. Um, but we could have some other logic that says, okay, maybe do retry. Maybe do add to the pool. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's not capped out at 100 or whatever. We could do that. It would just require making this code more complicated. I think for the first release of this system, I won't do that. But that's definitely something to think about um, to spice up the algorithm a bit, you know, and the results we get. All right. Now. Shazam. Here we go. Hey, look. It's a good spot. Another good spot. <sighs> Slightly awkward, but good. Very close to where I just was. Also pretty close to where I just was. Yeah, cool. So this was the building that we were inside, I think, actually. Um, so yeah, you see now that we're like not in the building, we're getting points not in the building. It's just kind of how um, Recast Navigator, as implemented in OpenMW, I suppose, works. So yeah, here we are in TR. We actually have a use for um, the signposts now um, because we're not, you know, we're not coming up with uh, points by hand anymore. So I'm just gonna try to walk really fast along this exit. Just run along here until I find some signposts, maybe. There we go. That's fast enough. Ooh. I have not considered that. Um, I see no reason not to do that, um, aside from, you know, just doing it. Um, so, like... Maybe you could say, okay, um, there's an item, and when you drop the item on the ground, that is uh, where the spawn point is, or something like that. That's a good idea. I'm going to put that on the list. Or spell. Okay, okay. So spell, then we're like overlapping on the mark and recall territory um, quite a bit, which I suppose we already are. Uh, something to think about. I'm going to put down here on the possible wish list. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking, Sophia, right? Like, like the inner Morrowind snob in me is like, I don't use fast travel. But then I'm like, oh, wait, I totally do because I've got multi-mark and I really abuse it. I'm a mage character. I've got mad mysticism skills. I can go wherever I want. Um, and so this is like kind of a different take on that, you know, mechanic that I'm arguably already abusing. Um... All right, so where was my... No, this isn't where I was going to write. I'm going to write it here. Yeah, we want to... That is definitely something we could do. Um, you know, would not be too crazy, I don't think, to implement. Okay, so where I had a place, I think they should have some signposts. But nonetheless, we're generating new points. Here we go. You can see right here for... This a town, Anthiran region. Here we are. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And anything I do like that, I might make configurable um, with some some reasonable defaults. I like giving people the option for sure. Okay, so yeah, signposts right in town here. Check it. Take me to Old Ebonheart, friends. Blah. Cool. Hey, I like that. <laughs> that was pretty fun. All right. Oh no, that's not the way out of town. Cool, okay. So yeah, as you can see, this is, it's, you know, I think it's working as intended. It gave me a, excuse me, friend. It gave me a reason to, um, let's see here, we got signposts right here. I just blaze right past them. Can I get to, 
you know, it gives you a reason to care about these things. Take me to Dondril. Um, and it gives you some kind of a, a fast travel mechanic in a game that arguably needs it, right? Like, you got Silt Striders, you got Mages Guilds, you got mods that add other fun ways. Um, and I feel like this signpost thing is just another way to help you get around, right? And, and you can choose how balanced you want to be. Already I have, um, excuse me, already I have time passing confi is configurable, the gold cost is configurable, um, you know, so you can use it however you want. You don't want time to pass? No problemo. You don't want it to cost money? No problemo. It won't. Let's make it daytime again because I like the sun. Of course it's raining. Thank you, Todd. And boom, that's just how it works. Oh, take me back to old Ebonheart, but don't charge me anything. Boom. Here we go. You can even install the mod incorrectly and not install the OMW add-on, and it will work. It will just disable those features. Fun fact. Wow, okay. Yeah, this, so this was a very fun look, and I, I feel like I'm walking away from this conversation with a lot of really good ideas here. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let me take a look at this code right here. Global. We got a little bit of code up here where I say, do you have the OMW add-on? And if you don't, we print a warning to the console and we tell you that feature is disabled and then a little bit down here we just say yeah if you've got you know if you got the plugin use the feature if not you know i figured rather than have the mod blow up on people who maybe you know might have installed but at least it'll keep working um and then yeah as you can see here i've got a blacklist of signs that we don't care about there's no guar trail cell and then there were these two signs from tr that i couldn't figure out what to do with maybe our friend uh, eltariel can help us out um, and then you'll see here, this little naughty list here, as I'm calling it, is a known list of, as it says here, sign names that don't match an exterior cell, right? You cannot COC to Aldrune back road. So we have to, in the code, map that to like a sensible actually place. Buckmith Fort, try Buckmith Legion Fort, friend, okay? It requires you actually have food and camping supplies. Ooh, ooh, yeah. That's a really good idea. So, ooh, dude guy, that's actually a really, really great idea. And what I could do is I could, like, add an interface or an event, right, that uh, a survival mod could hook into. Or I could try to detect said survival mod and say, well, if you've got it, you know, we need a, we need a cost for food, right? you got to have a, a tent. Um, that's a good idea. I'm going to note that as well. Yeah, I like that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, and I'm also thinking it will be neat to see how, if at all, uh, a mod could use the travel points we're collecting, you know. Um, and, and that's maybe a reason to start collecting the interiors, too. Uh, you got me thinking, dude guy. I don't know. All right. So, yeah, this one I can probably read pretty reasonably. Do. I've been talking to our friend Sector here about how to, how to figure this out. Going to need a, a script on creatures and stuff. Yeah, we totally are, but it's fine. It just works. Um, what do we do for points with points for cells with no signposts? I think we all pretty much agree that it's it would be cool to have some way to use these, and it sounds like having a, a travel token is the way to go. And getting that travel token, we're not too sure. We want it to be not super uncommon but not so rare, you know. I, I love the Dwemer coins idea, but Alice brought up a good point. You know, those are, in theory, limited. Actually, it would be interesting to know how many instances of Dwemer coins are. We can check right now. Let's do that. Oh, up high. Here we go. Let's check right now, huh? Let's see how many is in the game. Let's count Tribunal and Blood Moon as well, although I doubt there's any coinage in that one. Um... Let's just see. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one, Sophia. I like that. See, yeah, so, like, maybe the person who sells the tokens can, like, be like, yo, one token for one Dwemer coin or one token for, like, some gold cost that is configurable. Okay. So, let's see. Instances... 
Okay, Smalio. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's a good idea, dude guy. I definitely want to have a quest. I just like fun quests. Um, some kind of a quest, though, that's not too annoying. Um, could be related to the Mages Guild, indeed. Um, lots of folks interested in Dwemer stuff there and, and technology, you know. Um, it could make sense. All right. What am I looking for? Instances. We want the object ID. What is the... I don't know the object ID here. Miscellaneous items. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Object ID. There we go. Hmm. Not really that many. Mm, yeah, yeah, so there's, you know, there's things we could do, I think, to make the... I like the Dwemer coin cost idea, or like a more, you know, Drake's cost idea, for sure. Even a god needs Drake's, yeah, right? Well, he's, you know... <laughs> Honestly, though, I'm a little surprised. Um, Mark's script. Oh, testing cell. Okay, gotta love those. It just works. <coughs> Excuse me. Not going to lie, I was expecting a lot more instances. We got 61 instances of Dwemer coins in Morrowind, Blood Moon, Blood Moon, and Tribunal. I feel like I expected a lot more. All right, let's fire up TR now. I got to know. Oh, right. Thank you, Sophia. Yeah, that's... We're not going to resolve the leveled list contents in the CS, right? So there probably are a lot more. I still was expecting a lot more randomly placed around, though. Yeah, yeah. As Sophia mentioned, though, there's the, the leveled list, right? So the chests that you open up that will have them, it's like a, just a dice roll how many you'll get in there. But let's just see for funsies. Yeah, yeah, that's totally true. I do, too. <laughs> just for funsies, though, let's see what how many TR has instance-wise. You can do it. There you go. All right. We're going to make it chug again. As a recipe hit? Yeah. Somebody should make a crafting framework mod. Where's Zach? Somebody call Zach. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's Zach is implementing crafting framework in OpenMW. Absolutely. It's going to be part of Ashlander Architect, I think, um, or part of his Zach Utils framework. Um, yeah, yeah. It's Gonzo. It's definitely the leveled lists. But as you can see here, TR adds several hundred just randomly thrown about, too. So that's a thing, too. Excuse me. It would be cool to have a crafting recipe, right? If the player has Zach Utils or whatever installed, um, use it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Lots of lots of really great ideas here. So, so for sure, I'll I'll probably do this before I release the next update 2.0. That's gonna have the random points. Um, I will probably have this implemented, and then. This idea will probably be like a 2.1 or down the road because it's going to take more time to do and I'm not going to have enough time to do it this weekend. Uh, so, And then down the road, other ideas. Yeah, like this kind of stuff. Definitely really cool stuff. So, Awesome. That was a very fun look that it took a little bit longer than I expected. But now jumping into actually the website, which has been patiently running this whole time. All right. 
So, check boxes on the CFG generator. This thing has been kind of a long time coming. But what I'm talking about is the implementation of something like... All right, Alice. See ya. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. The implementation of the long-awaited feature where we can tell the website, yo, I got this mod installed. You click this button. You go down to the CFG generator. You pick your preset. Total overhaul. The website does its thing. Takes a little bit longer on my laptop. A lot of it longer, apparently. Oh, man, really? <laughs> you can do it. Wow, it's like, really? It's because I'm streaming. OBS just totally... My processor doesn't like it. What can I say? Okay, I should have picked a smaller mod list. But we're in for the long haul now. There we go, finally. Okay, you pick your mod list. You go to the custom CFG section. And you'll note now... Yeah, thanks, Santa. That's a good idea. Di oh, Gonzo. Yeah, download more. Psh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah, okay. D yeah, I'm glad you guys have a sense of humor. <laughs> but as we get to here, you'll note, Patch for Purist is checked. And if we scroll all the way down here, I think we need a button that'll like shortcut us down here, probably. But all the way down here, if you've used the CFG generator before, you'll note the absence of the multiple select form. It's gone. And now we have this submit custom setup. I click this button, and this gives me a CFG generator loadout using only what I've said I've installed. Patch for purists content files just from Patch for Pierce. And so what we are going to implement now until the end of the stream and, and until we got it implemented. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's basically what I do too, man. Yeah, and whatever works for you, you know. Um, now we have this on the website. Uh, ooh. You mean the, so Gonzo, you mean the, um, the magic button, you mean the, 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 the submit, the custom CFG button? Uh, is that what you mean? Yeah, okay, um, I think probably, right, like if, if not some shortcut button right here to get us down there, then then yeah, having it somewhere else because yeah, it's like way, especially on a big mod list, right? If I if I click just good Morrowind, much smaller mod list, new mod list I came up with by the way, highly recommend it. Obviously, there's a lot less going on here, and I can just kind of get down there pretty easy. Um, yeah, I don't know, something like that would be pretty good, I think. All right, uh, so what we're going to do though. And what we, I think, pretty desperately. Uh, oh, okay. So, okay. I'm sorry. I'm derping over here. Let's let's go really quick before I jump into the weeds here. I see what you're talking about, Gonzo. My bad. They're talking about something. Yeah, 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 that's a good call out. I mean, you are like the brains behind the awesome new UI that we have. So you mean have it right here and also maybe right here or... Hmm? Let me know what you're thinking, but I, I agree. We should do something like that. Can't hurt. Yeah, exactly that. Okay, yeah. Um, Definitely can't hurt. Let's uh, mod with it. Really should make a template for this, but for now I'm just gonna copy paste it. I'm just gonna put it there. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, come on, you. Web browsers. I tell you. No! It's not cached. Oh, it's just my CSS not working. Anyways, we'll, we'll, I'm not going to waste time centering this right now. Too much time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Gonzo. There's also the next page button up here, too, which is why I felt like, okay, but um, there's also that one as well. So, yeah. Um, well, that's not right, though. This is totally wrong. There's more than 11 mods. It shouldn't show the final page here, I don't think. Anyways, um, let's just take a really quick dive here and figure out why that's not. No, no, not that bad. No. I am just failing to find this right here. There we go. Huh. Oh, sheesh. I done goofed. There we go. Yay! Okay, there we go. It all the world makes a little bit more sense at least. <clears throat> so, what are we doing, Johnny? Why did you even bring me here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Ugh, we got to load this page again. Ugh. So what we're doing now is we have this little bit of code here that's commented out. And what it's going to do, I probably should have uncommented it before I loaded the page. Let's go ahead and do that. Uncomment, blammo, load the page. What this is going to do <clears throat> is on a mod list that is split up into groups like Total Overhaul. Yes, thank you, Gonzo. I agree. It is going to put at the top of each group a single checkbox that you can click to check the whole group. There will be a further checkbox that will check everything except for the dev build only mods. Um, but this will allow you to kind of go and more easily, you can check them one at a time or you can, you know, knock off uh, the groups. It already uh, works. Yeah. It, uh, so what works now, let's go on the actual version of the website that doesn't run like a snail. What works now is, go on here. We'll do, uh, where is it? We'll do this one. What works now is checking these off one by one. Going to the bottom and getting your custom setup. You may also go through the mod list like this. Already added, hence why it says remove add mods this way and get your custom CFG what we're going for if the page will ever load it has finally what we're going for is this big old checkbox right here wow it works look at that no not quite actually it looks like it works um, so what happens under the hood? Yeah, Megabox. I figured, you know, make it big. Um, what happens under the hood when you click this? Loads a bit of JavaScript code. And under the hood, this code uses an API called local storage. And as the name implies, it stores your selection on your computer. Fun fact, my server never ever sees what you pick or what you use here. Until, with the caveat... Until you click this, submit custom setup. Then you're telling my server what mods you have installed. But other than that, I never see your local storage stuff ever. What you put for your, your folder path or any of that. I never see any of that. I have no use for it. I wouldn't do anything with it, even if I did. We never see that, if I can get all the way back down there. 
but when you click this, that data isn't exactly updated. Yeah, thank you, Sophia, it is beautiful. I haven't worked on it for a few weeks because when I do this, it doesn't actually update your local storage. You can see here, maybe uh, you've already noticed, I've started to implement these functions here, which is basically to, so right now I have the logic kind of like hard coded to do things at certain times, right? Like when you get here, do this, when you get there, do that. But unfortunately, a lot of these things need to be repeated, for example, when I click this checkbox. So what I've started to do um, is take out these little bits of code and put them into reusable, composable bits that I can then come down here and be like, okay, um, we, we checked the big box, um, you know, it's, it's going there. So that's where we're at now. And I left off looking at this a few weeks ago. So I'm like, I have no idea what's going on here. You'll have to bear with me, but shall we dive in? Yes, let's. All right, let's get our friend the console out, the page open. And so, just trying to remember what the heck we're doing here. Somewhere, I know when that checkbox is checked. Maybe? No, I don't think I'm doing anything with it yet. Ah, uh, here we go. Group target boxes. Yes, here we go. Group checkboxes. So this is where I tell the page, give me all the big checkboxes right here. And they got the class name, custom CFG input sublist. That's not really important. That's just what I call them. And then this is just some like syntaxism for going through each of them one at a time. And what I do is I add a click listener. Okay. So when I do this, something happens. We're going to need though to do this more and have it not load terribly slow. So I'm going to load expanded vanilla. We're going to come back to here. And so it knows what the children meaning here's the big one. These are the children. When you check it, it knows which ones these are. That's how it gets these ones and not those ones, right? It only gets the ones within the section. Okay, here we go, Whew, finally. What I'm trying to do here is give myself a bone. Okay. So. Group target boxes, yeah. So group target boxes would be these. And so what I need to do here is we have a bit of code. You might have noticed this right here, CFG URL. We have a bit of code where when it's all said and done, we update the URL on this guy. When you load the page, this has no, it will just take you to whatever you, where you're at now. Um, for every checkbox you check, it changes the URL to be your preset. So in this case, expanded vanilla, right? And then it adds each mod onto it. That's what this code is right here. We're throwing the mod name on there, and that's how we get a URL like this one. Uncheck that, check that. Like, come on, you can do it. Boom, preset expanded vanilla, M equals patch for Pierce. And it's gonna be ampersand M equals blah for every single mod that you check. Um, ooh, <laughs> this seems mildly broken, though, because we should still have this checked. All right. Let's open a smaller preset in another window. Ooh. Oh, I totally meant to do that in another tab. Oh, well. And there it is. Okay. Huh. Interesting data point. Let's go back. You may have noticed just now, it was checked when we looked at the other list. Oh no, there it is now, yeah. Ugh. I need a taco. Or a few tacos. Okay. So. Our friend the console, up. So when we check this, we are already 
modifying the check status. But what we also need to do is we need to update the URL and we also need to store in the local storage yo that this mod is now activated. So let's go back up here and make sure we got this completed, these little pieces. So set installed. If I look down here, there's a couple scenarios for installation. It's your first mod to be set up. There's nothing there. We're putting a new list in there. So I think what we'll do here is we'll say if whoop, installed. I guess it'll be null. Else. Okay. And this is going to happen regardless. Okay, and if it's so, if it's a new one, I'm going to include that comment there. Thank you, past me. Uh, we have two now we have two scenarios where it's installed but we're going to handle this one right here removal we're going to handle that just in here hey <laughs> Kagan welcome back glad you're here yeah JavaScript it's one of those days you know that's so you know we're getting crazy we're hitting the skooma today no, uh, I'm just uh, working on a feature here where on the CFG generator, you can get a partial config based on your progress on a mod list. And we're, uh, we already have that working. You can check patch for purist. You can get just patch for purist. But what I'm working on now is this give me all the mods in a group checkbox. Um, so yeah, you JavaScript, but we're trying to make it pretty. We're trying to do it right. Uh, okay, so... Just trying to think what I was thinking when I wrote this. So maybe what I can do now to test that this works is I can say, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, okay, so Nexus 2, <laughs> that's fair. I always wanted this to be like a super useful tool, you know, right? Um, and I feel like now we're finally in a place where it's a, it is, you know, and this like will really like solidify that. But like, if you use the data that's on here, you don't need to run M locks, you know, you, you get like a legit working config that you can just copy and paste and it just works. Yeah, well, actually, I had contemplated, like, throwing, like, an install with port mod button or something like that, you know. Um, but I don't really know what's involved with that. I'm a simple old man who just uses a text editor. <laughs> All right, let's use our new thing here. Set installed. Does it just work? And, uh, yeah. Well, uh, while I'm here... Just, just as I'm like flushing this out, I like to put this stuff here to sanity check myself. Do new setup. Okay, this will be um. Yeah, for sure. We need something like that. I'm not against making it easy at all. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's. I'll consider that definitely flattery. Thank you, dude, guy. I appreciate that. Um, you know. I said it before, but I made this website just for fun. I never expected anybody to ever use it, if you can believe that. And, uh, you know, when I when I go here, whoops, and you might have noticed this little button here at the bottom of the page, but when I, you know, when I look at this, like I just see these visitor statistics, and I'm just like, man, my, this is just crazy. Look at all these people. Like, Herdrax and I like to talk about this sometimes, like, oh, man, I got people and I don't even know really where Macau is <sighs> looking at the website, you know, just all these people throughout the world checking it out. 
getting their Morrowind on, you know. Um, it's really astonishing, and it humbles me. Hey, Kagan, me too, actually. Um, so actually, where I, I am a build and release engineer type of guy, so my customers are the programmers in the company. Um, and yeah, I try to automate as much as I can uh, within reason, of course. So yeah, I feel you. Okay, nice, dude, guy. That's great to hear. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, I'm glad it was useful. I'm glad you're here today. Glad you found your way to the stream, man. Welcome. Um, and yeah, just look at this. So, like, we had a, you know, I had to reset the database back in the 4th of November. But, I mean, within two days of a month here, you know, we've got 188,000 visits on the site. It's just like, this is what we're doing here, folks. It's great. Feels totally great. Um, all right. <laughs> Back to here now, though. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, you could totally go off the rails, right? Like, it's possible to build beautiful Rube Goldberg machines that nobody understands. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to do that. Okay, so let's use this code that I wrote. Set installed. So the installed would be... Um, get installed. If I'm trusting all this code I wrote weeks ago. Um, and the slug. Would be that. Yeah, same here. I have two. Uh, for example, I had on my, I have Raspberry Pis in my house that do various things. And I had like update checking automation and just for various reasons, um, that proved to be a little flaky, and uh, I, I disabled it, you know. Um, but yeah, I've been there f for sure on other things. All right, so the slug would be mod slug. And the update button would be true. Right. Okay, nice. Cool, that's cool. Yeah, I've, I've tossed around the idea of, like, how much do I want to automate, like, my laptop, you know? Um, you can go off the rails. Um, certainly, though, like, all the process for the website. We're going to just take a swick, uh, quick diversion here. We can look at... Um, I have actually open-sourced the deployment code for the website. It's available here on GitLab, and it's uh, just Ansible. Hopefully, simple Ansible stuff. Um putting the code on a server and, and running it in the specific way that we do here. So, um, you know, this is like, these are chunks of code that I run hundreds of times potentially and, and made sense, definitely made sense to automate this. Yeah, but I'm very happy to share this and have this be open source. And, you know, if somebody wanted to fork the website, they could conceivably use this to deploy to their server. All right, um, so I think that's in there. Now we just need to see if this works. Um. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, you could be hideous, right? <laughs> I, I believe you're talking about how I got the tasks broken up into little, you know, segments here. Here we just, blah. Here's my template for that. Here's where we install Python stuff. Just little bits, right? I want it to be easy to understand, especially when you're looking at what is effectively logic embedded in YAML. You know, you want to really be conscious about not going off the rails. Like, we are copying code from my laptop to a server here with YAML, which is like a, a data structure. We're doing logic with a data structure. So, yeah, it gets a little gnarly sometimes, but um, thank you. I did try to, like, this is built off of code that is not open source. That's my private Ansible collection that is, like, 10 years old and hideous. Um, and, and so I have the benefit of hindsight and knowledge to have refined this down so yeah yep yeah yeah for sure yeah i try to do that too uh as much as i can you don't want to create too much spaghetti code so okay let's make let's see if this actually works um i believe this is the only place where i need to plug it in right now um mm, yeah we're doing okay no we're doing it here too but with this final argument as false And 
thing we're doing here, right, with the new one. Yeah, so we got to plug this in a couple of places. Yeah, yeah, well, sometimes in a monolith, like other, you know, nasty concepts, does have its place, right? It's complicated, like so many things. All right, putting that in there. False. Um, splice. Oh, right, this is where... I think this is where I'm taking a mod out of a list and you splice to take it out of a known index. Yep, for sure. Todd willing. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna mess with this because I didn't implement the splice logic just yet. Um, so, okay, and we'll implement this right here too. God, Howard. Yes. That is a horse that never gets tired of being beaten. I tell you what. All right, we're going to now pass in the new array here. Uh, I don't like that I'm doing this, though. I feel like I should say if it's... Okay. If install... Yeah. Oh, I'm already doing that. Yeah, okay. Silly me. Let's go. No. Boom. Yeah, that just works, right? Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> I should... I will make this not a boolean eventually, but for now I'm going to leave it a boolean. Just make it the text, right? And when I'm giving it text, change the text to that, because I got this text down here. Uh, let's just do it. I hope this is right. <laughs> I really hope this is right. Checking if something is null or empty in JavaScript is so tricky, depending on what it is, and I can never remember. Is this the right way to do it with this? I don't remember. We're just gonna take a gamble here. All right. There you go. All right. And I think we can now use this God, what happened? Yeah, we can. Uh. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny you mentioned that, Kagan. I was recently remembering uh, the time that somebody filed a bug on the OpenMW tracker on GitLab because of an NPC that came falling out of the sky screaming. Clearly, that's a bug, right? That was fun to see that email come in and be like, oh, it's your first time playing Morrowind, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome. This is Tar Heel. Yeah, falling from the sky is what he... No, it's not a bug. That's just what he does, right? And apparently some designers um, wished to write it into the game to save him, and you can do that now. All right. But yeah, it was really funny to see a newcomer be like, that is clearly a bug, right? He's falling out of the sky and just dies like that? That's so weird. Yes. Yes. That is weird. All right. I'm getting way too distracted here. So we're going to say just nothing. Oh, wait. We'll give it an explicit no. This isn't Lua. It's weird, but awesome. Exactly. That's why we're all here, right? Oh, interesting. So I'm like a, you know, I've played, I got nothing against Skyrim. I like it. I play it mostly with no mods, though. I'm not one of those people that likes to really heavily mod Skyrim. I would argue that it doesn't really add much to the game. Um, 
but yeah that's interesting so maybe that is where the background on that comes from I'm gonna give you a null here too okay and it looks like so yeah okay oh interesting oh yes <laughs> <laughs> it's the um the Galdur, the one where you have to like fight a bunch of like Draugr kings in one room. Santa was over at my house, we're playing Skyrim on the couch. And yeah, this boss fight is just awful. I'm getting shouted around. I can't even stand up. It was so awkward. I was actually kind of embarrassed for Skyrim at that moment. I'm like, oh yeah, you don't want to play this game. Yeah, you know, dude guy, I actually played it recently. I was playing the AE content on my Steam Deck. I just want to play Skyrim on the Steam Deck and it ran great, looked great, you know. Um and I mean, it was fun, but I didn't, um, yeah, you do that, Santa. And by the way, have you played Morrowind yet? Um, <laughs> Skyrim was fun, but I, as I was saying, I didn't actually finish the game. Like, I think I left off, kind of. I was doing, oh yeah, I was doing um, Dragonborn, and I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I would rather just play actual Morrowind. Ooh, nice. Yes, that's what's up. FF4 Ultima, I have to. Oh, I'm hacking... Just got to go ahead and take a quick break to look at this. If you are into classic games at all and you never played this ROM hack, you just do it. Just do it, do it, do it. I'm putting a link in here right now. Outstanding. My favorite take on FF4 for sure. No remake Square could do would come close to this. All right, that's it. I said it. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's why it's like people are like, oh, I hope they remake Morrowind. And it's like, I kind of hope they don't. I just feel like they would do it wrong. Outer Worlds looked kind of alien, you know? Um, I feel like Outer Worlds touched on that a little bit. Right, exactly, dude. Guy, I'm like playing Dragonborn. I'm like, well, this is okay, but it's like I could just be playing actual Morrowind, you know? And here we are. <laughs> All right. Uh, getting way distracted. So I've done a couple of changes here, and I don't know if they work. The last thing I want to do here... Store it. Okay, so... Yeah, we're going to need to get installed every time. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree, Kagan, you know, there's some good remakes um like let's just take a look at the uh, Trials of Mana Steam. I felt like the Trials of Mana remake was really good. Um, this came out at the same time or, or so as Final Fantasy VII Remake, and honestly, like, this was a better action game than Final Fantasy VII Remake, I would say. Um, but yeah, like, I'm totally a guy who would go for the SNES version any day over a Unreal Engine remake, but, like, all smugness aside, this was so good. Um, this is, like, on my two replay list, actually. Uh, yeah, Skywind, yeah, Sector, I hear you. I definitely would want to see that, for sure. Um, ooh, Redneck Rampage, interesting. Redneck Rampage is on my, uh, <laughs> I need to play it list, but, uh, that's build engine game, right? <clears throat> oh, cool, nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the Famicom version, Super Famicom version is cool, and there's quite a few, if you go on ROM hacking, quite a few good patches for it. Um, I feel like it's better than Secret of Mana in a lot of ways. Um, but the remake is legit good, too. The only thing it... Yeah, Sick and Dead Zest, too. Yeah, for sure, number three. The only thing the remake lacks is, like, couch co-op multiplayer, right? Like, you should be able to do that. And they didn't add it for whatever reason, so... Oh, Redneck Rampage. Actually, not a good game. Okay, I got you. Right, yeah, I figure the humor is kind of why you play most of those games. Yeah, you know, um, it's one of those projects I definitely respect. We have the soundtrack on Shuffle. You might have noticed some tunes playing from it. Um, mad props to those people, for sure, creating beautiful content. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't play with Charlotte. I, um... 
I don't know. Maybe you'll use the Japanese voiceovers if you do that. Maybe that'll make it better. <laughs> but okay, glad to know I wasn't the only one. Oh, Sector, I think he means Skywind. Morrowind re-implemented in Skyrim Engine. Skywind. Starwind is done. Hella done. Um, and it lives on. Oh my god, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Charlotte seems like a useful character, though. Like, that's the magic powerhouse of the game, you know? When I, when I replay it, I was going to pick Charlotte and do that path. Hey, I do it too, honestly. Not going to lie. So, okay. All right, I've been dawdling on this for long enough. We need to, uh, let's see. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Please do. Kagan, please go for it. Skywind fix. Ah, uh, that's funny. Easy mistake to make, I suppose. Ooh, MSU1 of uh, Seeking Dead and Setsu 3. Ooh, I would like to hear that. That soundtrack... I've got the re soundtrack for the remake. It's on, like, my playlist. Love it. It's more Duke Nukem than new Duke Nukem. Ooh, okay. Not a modern build engine. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, yeah, the remake music is awesome. Totally cool. Wow, Gonzo, hook it up. I need that for the... Because I've been using MSU1 for uh, Secret of Mana Turbo. There's, like, a fan soundtrack that's quite metal and I don't know it just fits like the boss music is just like yes I'm fighting a boss nice okay wow cool <laughs> yeah redneck rampage I feel like I have to see just because I come from a uh, shall we say rural area you know so I just gotta see it <laughs> alright let's look at this one Oh, right on. Wow, already I'm feeling like Duke Nukem. Holy smokes. Games and everything, wow. Cool. I need to see this. Is it out? Oh, okay, to be announced. Wow, cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. That's kind of awesome. The game is over the top. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, you know, like... What do you expect from something called Redneck Rampage, right? Like a 90s build engine game? It's going to be hideous in some way or another. Okay. I will try the demo. Yeah. Um, we'll run it with wine because that's how we do. Not right now, though. I just love the projectile guts. That's too cool. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. All right. We will get to that. Maybe in a future stream when we actually do something non-Morrowind. Let's try to check my code now. So, what should happen is when I check this, it should at least set them into your local storage. Um, let me reload the page. Cool, cool. Right on. Awesome, Kagan. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's how we do, right? All right. Uh, page reloaded. Good. Um, check it. Now, how do we check this we can go to the mod page for momw patches and see it checked i think is the way to do that so let's go to the top of the page let's do a quick search and we'll get a mod list context here and if everything blends nope didn't blend darn <laughs> wine wine i mean you know i feel you trust me Okay, so what I was expecting <clears throat> was for this button to read. Ooh, and it's now just blowing up completely. Wow, hold on. Something is not right. Let's get another console here. Reload the page. I was expecting this to say remove from CFG. There we go. Just like that. Okay, what happened? All right. Um, huh, This is awkward. Let's reload the page again. Yeah, you can see why I shelved this for a few weeks. We are deep in the weeds of JavaScript hideousness. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that. No, uncheck that. Reload the page. And it should have at least MOMW patches. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Good. Uncheck it here. Should say add. Good. Good. We're getting somewhere. 
Oh, you know what? Um, actually, I have, I did have finished. To be, to be clear, I have finished Skyrim. Just my last playthrough, I didn't finish it. I kind of got because I've been there, done that kind of a thing, you know. Um, but yeah, I have finished Skyrim. I finished Dragonborn, um, and I finished um, Dawn Guard. I actually really like Dawn Guard and Dragonborn. You know, they're they're pretty good. Um, Skyrim ending, I thought it was weak. You know, the end boss kind of thing was pretty weak. Like it's neat and it's fine. I don't know what they could have done different, but I yeah. Okay, so now we're back to uh, it's not enabled. Now what I want to happen, what I need to happen, get some fresh JavaScript here. Whoa, Sector, so you're playing like Uldrim even. Wow, you didn't have no fancy god rays in your game. No siree Bob. Xbox 360, yeah, I played it on PS3. Smallio and I went to opening night at a GameStop. We went to like a midnight release, waiting in a line with a bunch of fat nerds like myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what I need to see here. And I'm not. I'm going to close the browser and hope it's just the cache being the cache. Uh, whoops. Oh, okay, can PS3 Legendary Edition. Wow, yeah, I had the PS3 with no DLC, and there was the hideous bug in Bethesda games on PS3 where the save game would become so big that it would just, like, grind the game to a halt. Right, yeah, exactly, Kagan. I feel the same way. It's like, well, it's there. It's The content is there, you know. Um, it's whatever, you know. I feel like the in Skyrim, the Red Year event was kind of symbolic for Bethesda, right? Like they were trying to tell the fans to get over Morrowind. It's gone. Maybe I'm reading into it too much. Yeah, I'm so I'm I'm on SSE with the AE content on my Steam Deck. I got the GOG copy. Um you know, it's it's whatever. It's whatever. Oh, I see. Huh. Yeah, I mean, you know, canon changes like that, they are what they are. They gotta T E S O is their like current active game, so they gotta make that make sense, and I get it. It's got to make sense for their active product, not their shipped 20 years ago product that doesn't generate them really money anymore, I bet. Yeah, exactly, Sector. Yeah, so I'm not alone, right? Like, when I saw that, I'm like, wow, okay. There will be no further Morrowind, apparently. <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah, hey, props to Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, Gonzo. On both, for sure. All right, here we go. All right, so hopefully that was just a cash issue. And now when I click this... <gasps> I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> eh? All right, uh, well... Let's at least see, okay, let's check that, and let's go look at Patch for Purists. Maybe we take two steps forward, two steps back, and then one step forward, ultimately. Let's try out our new search feature here, PFP, blammo. All right, a moment of truth. In several moments. I clicked the wrong button, that's why. Silly me. No, it didn't work. Why? Oh, no. Okay. Very disappoint. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hey, but that's good. Look, we have an error. Do the, yeah, exactly. Do the JavaScript. Cha-cha. Which I have clearly borked something. Line 100. Let's see. Uh, Oh. Oh. That's right. I knew about this. Silly me. So what I have done here is I, I'm using a variable that's not defined, hence why it's blowing up. But what I have done in the HTML, going back there, 
past me was already thinking about this. I have gone ahead and inserted the mod list slug as uh, the class here. Uh, or the mod slug, I'm sorry, as the ID. Yeah, 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 this is what I want. I want to pull the ID out, so we'll say uh, group box ID. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like this, I think, should work. Hmm? Let's see. If it did work, we'll get maybe a different error. Or no error at all. Well, that would explain why it blew up on one. Because it literally blew up on one. So, depending on what happens, we may be working on this again tomorrow. But I would... F I, tomorrow, the plan is to go forward with... We're going to do total overhaul from zero. We're going to do it step by step, and we're going to check things out. Our friend Sector here has written the bump map fixer. We're going to note which mods need to use that. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. All right. Hey, all right. Do new setup. That's a thing I wrote. Cool. Boom. Look at that. Ooh, they're all there. Oh. So now, do I go here? T.O. from scratch. Yeah, you heard it here. Um, I don't know if we're going to do all almost 600 mods, but we're gonna. I'm going to do as many as I can reasonably do in the two or whatever hours of the stream. And then maybe we'll carry it over into next week. But those of us on the team that are working on the 6.0 project, we have been and will continue to be going through the, the lists step by step, making sure they're good. But we're so close to the release. I would like to have Santa Claus bring a release to you users. Uh, maybe that's too soon, but maybe by early next year we can bring it to you. Okay, look at that. Remove from CFG. Remove from CFG. Look at that. Ooh, it's working. All right. And so what, wait, wait, what did we just do here? Hold up. What did we just do here? Well, what we didn't do was we didn't implement unchecking it. But what we did do is we implemented when I check select all from this sub list. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, Sector. Got to push them all. Yes. So, okay, let's, let's, whoops, whoops, whoops. Uh, let's move forward enough in the list here. Remove. 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 Okay. Not installed yet, right? We check that button. Refresh the page. Tis installed. Yeah, awesome. Okay, that's progress. Um... That's good. That's really good. So what do we have? Clicking the group button installs all the mods in the group. What do we not have? Unclicking them to uninstall them. Also, we do not have updating this link, right? I don't know if you can see down there. It's too tiny, but it still just says patch for purists. Um, so we need to implement more code to update that link. I might do that tonight. We might do it tomorrow. Might do it next week. We might, because I personally don't need this to be done to begin my step-by-step -step journey on total overhaul um we might do them both in tandem who knows we'll see okay so this is great oh this needs to remember that it's checked though i think maybe um good things take time thank you yeah for calling that out yes um okay so i need to put a to-do list here um to do if all tar group target boxes are checked check the group box so yeah I just need a little bit of code that recognizes all these are checked uh, and then checks that um, no big deal and then yeah so what do we need now from here we need to update, update the URL and that's it I think it's I think it might be done. I, I very well might do this over lunch after I have some food in me. Um, let's go back to the list. Wow. What did we do? What did we not do? Check all for section. Check all for list. Um, that's another thing we got to do for shorter lists, right? Check all for the list. 
um, and also for the for the bigger ones. This is working. I demonstrated it. That is working. I also demonstrated it. We aren't going to do that today. We'll do it next week. I'm going to put a note here. Didn't get to this. We'll begin either tomorrow or next. I'm really shooting for tomorrow to begin this tomorrow. We didn't update the website today because I didn't really, you know, push any code out there. Actually, you know what? I'll go ahead and... We'll go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead and deploy the code. Why not? We'll put what I just developed out there and you all can play with it some and break it and tell me how you broke it and I'll fix it. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, just recapping what we did today. It was a great day coming back, bringing you a bunch of new mods, charging, harvest lights, shield on equipper, patches, uh, bringing you some updates to existing mods. We took a long, fun look at uh, random travel points. Yeah, yeah, well, so to be fair, Kagan, <laughs> I think, to be fair, I'm just rolling it out to the beta version of the website, so we got this little disclaimer up here, um, but yeah, we're doing it live, pushing it out there, <laughs> and further to our prior discussion about automating, you know, the deploy is automated, so like, if I really seriously break things, we can just use our version control and automatically deploy the old code, it's no big deal, it just works, um, yeah, wow, great. So great stream today. Looking forward to delivering the final result of our random points in the signpost travel mod and also some cool new stuff like a stats menu. And yeah, the fully functional, fully working checkbox extravaganza you've all been waiting for. And also tomorrow, doing the total overhaul together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, I, like, can go into the server, obviously, and do it manually, but, yeah, I mean, this is a thing that I do literally hundreds of times, you know, a month or more, you know, so just to have an easy button, make it happen. That's how people like me do, so, yeah. I thank you for joining me today, everybody. Have a lovely day. Happy modding, and we'll see you tomorrow.